so yeah, we've got we've got news. I hear the last one's doozy. Yeah, let's let's start off by saying, um, kids, you may want to skip our last story. You've got a warning here. And let me, I say kids, let's say more toward the male end of things. You might oh, want to skip the last one. Uh, of course, that's your favorite. You might want to skip the last one. Don't you even think about it, Peggy. I see you thinking about it and you just stop right now. <laughs> we are seriously considering jumping from the top of the tower all the way into the kitchen. And we're not gonna. But of course, we have other things to cover, other various and sundry stupid. Other than crinkly balls yeah. of all yeah. varieties. Lot, lot, lots more than that. Let's let's get to it. Let's get the intro rolling. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go off on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible things, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? Crazy. And we're going to start with... Crazy. Oh, God, it's going to be every week. It's good. This is the next four years. Of course, Trump shit bleeds over into this, but not in the way you were expecting. Aren't we supposed to be a nice, warm little donut hole inside the shit Trump donut? Well... Some of our viewers are big Trump fans, and they get very mad at us well, for our anti-Trump commentary. And I say to you... I don't care. Yeah, that that you can be mad all you like. It's a big internet. Find another place to to fuck about. I heard I hear gab.ai is a nice spot. Go hang out there. Um so uh Peggy They're both running around like fucking fiends right now. So <laughs> Dan just gave her the dad face. If you were anywhere on the internet this weekend, you may have heard about the little spat regarding Hamilton. Yeah. Spoiler alert, Hamilton won. Yeah. Uh, short version of what happened was uh, Vice President-elect Mike Pence went to see Hamilton, and at the conclusion of Hamilton, the cast gave him a brief but... I would say relatively polite lecture on very you, polite. You need to govern. I, would, I wouldn't even say it was a lecture. They gave a very short statement, very politely delivered. Right. Please consider us. Consider us people. And so next came up. Of course, Trump didn't like this. He got on uh, Twitter, started yelling about <laughs> Hamilton. That's how we deal with problems. And his followers decided they were going to harass and annoy the folks at Hamilton. Except... They also decided they were going to boycott Hamilton, which, good luck, that motherfucker sold out through, like, 20... Yeah, that's like... 500. I'm, I'm not going to buy Hamilton tickets. That's like saying you're not going to buy a pink unicorn. Right. Yeah. You can't get Hamilton tickets. That shit sold out when our grandchildren are dead. However, they... Did not quite. They did. They did it in their own unique fashion. They they proceeded upon their harassment. There's Hamilton, the hit musical, and Hamilton, the city. Oh no! Angry social media users confused the two. Oh no! When Rianne Leonard finished running the lights for Friday's performance of The Toxic Avenger at Hamilton Theater Incorporated, she checked her phone and saw reams of notifications. Leonard, who is a member of the theater uh, company's production team, also manages the Twitter account for the theater company based on McNabb Street North in Hamilton, Ontario. Oh, this dear. is great, she thought. People are tweeting about the show. But the first tweet she saw was alarming. The first one was something like, I'm never supporting Hamilton Theater again. Leonard had her, had a moment of panic. Oh, sweet God, what did we do that was so wrong? Didn't take her long to piece what happened together. The, the Twitter account for the theater company in Hamilton, The City, in southern Ontario, was being mistaken for the account of Hamilton, the Broadway musical. Do they think that the theater gets named after the show that's playing there? You know how easy it Hamilton is? Hamilton is playing at the Richard Rogers Theater, I think. Yeah. It's not the Hamilton 
You know how easy it is to verify a Twitter account is the one. You just hover your name over the Twitter, and there it is. It tells you what it's connected to. You see a preview of the profile right there. You, you, for God's... You know, what, you know what makes me sad about this whole thing is, like, it's the internet. So y'all are familiar with Lin-Manuel Miranda, who seems like joy incarnate. Yeah. Like, he's just this happy little nerd who wrote a musical, a rap musical about Alexander Hamilton. And who thought that was going to work? But it blew up. And now he's doing Moana and he's going to be in Mary Poppins. And he's just the happiest fucking nerd in the world. And he just wants to teach you about the guy that founded the Treasury. And like this, like... Lynn Melbourne Miranda doesn't deserve this. And he's not in the show anymore, but well, he wrote it. And you know, if you're going to harass someone, at least harass the right person. Yeah. At least harass the people you intend to harass. And like, irony of ironies, they harassed a theater in Canada. In Canada! It's just one more reason for Canada to look at us and just be like, you know, if anyone should build a wall. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? It, it doesn't take anything at all to figure out that you're you're doing the wrong thing yeah i mean look i can show it to you right now uh you just you go to twitter and you type in hamilton theater and instead of it brings up you can look at the profile look that's it's a, it's got the toxic avenger on there yeah but that takes so long and so much effort that could be uh. better spent Hurling racist slurs. You just, all you just, good God. A little bit of competence. Janine Pirro, who's a piece of shit Westchester lawyer, who has a show on Fox News now, was on, and she was like, just stick to your hip hop and your dancing. I'm like, I mean, I, I mentioned this the other day. I, I, I get people, there are people on Twitter who really don't like me. And you know, I'm like, why are I, why are my enemies so damn incompetent? I I I don't get a Lex Luthor. I get a bunch of Bluto's and Daffy Ducks. It's so frustrating. Is it so much to ask these days for evil to be competent? Is it so much? Sharks with laser beams, man. Oh, freaking laser beams. Anyway, for a little bit of something joyful. My haters are really devoted. They're idiots, but they're devoted. Yeah. And I just want to look at them and be like, why do you follow me? You fucking hate me so much. Like, what are you doing here? It's not going to change, guys. I'm only going to get bitchier as I get older and more into my cats. Like, it's not going to change. <laughs> well, our, ne our next story, it, it's, it's well, some of those, sometimes we get these uh, mug shots that don't that fit the story perfectly i don't think we're ever going to top that combination after this next story because if you look at this headline and you look at this mugshot they go they're like yep that's the guy that is exactly the guy i was expecting to see in this story man arrested after terrorizing neighborhood with air horns Oh, look at him. Oh, my. <laughs> that, That's the guy. If they told you to render air horn as a human, <laughs> you would draw that guy. El Segundo, California. Police say a man was blowing the extremely loud horn early in the morning, disturbing several neighbors. According to El Segundo police, officers in the west side of town heard an extremely loud horn being actuated that sounded similar to a train horn. Uh, police say there were several reports spanning several weeks of the same horn in the neighborhood coming from the same four-door compact vehicle. After hearing the horn, officers pulled over John W. Nugent in a 2006 Chevrolet Aveo. And after inspecting the vehicle, they found an air horn equipment inside his car. He was driving around? Yes. Multiple neighbors responded to the scene and initiated a citizen's arrest 
Nugent was taken into custody as being charged with suspicion of disturbing the peace, his car was also impounded, horn and all. <laughs> Why? Why was it? Apparently there was one specific person in that neighborhood he wanted to annoy. You ever hear the phrase ha scalpel, not a hammer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to annoy one specific person, air horn is not the way to go. <laughs> yeah, that that's kind of, that, that's a broad... You're, you're kind of blanket carpet bomb in the area when you do that. Like, dick of the month club. Yeah, that's very specific. You can send, you know, but that takes money. Hmm. But this guy, I mean, he looks so happy. That is a mugshot. That is an amazing <laughs> mugshot. That is an air horn given human form. He is so happy to be arrested. That is a man like, I never thought of this dream would happen. I he wanted to annoy one person. One person. I mean, good and job. You know you done you fucked up. Did. You know you done fucked up when the when the neighborhood comes out and citizens arrest your ass. Yeah. You have pissed off way too many people when that shit happens. Because <laughs> when they have like a neighborhood intervention with handcuffs. You know, it takes a quite a bit to get anyone to give a fuck about any goddamn thing. I think I saw that porno once. Neighborhood intervention with handcuffs. <laughs> I don't think it involved an air horn, though. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just... What it, the fuck? It created a picture in my head, is all I'm saying. What? How did you... <laughs> what? You got off at the wrong exit, Tara. Uh-oh. Just, just saying that's why we're married, because we both think the same way. So, Like, for instance, today, when I looked under the chair, I went, man, there's a whole bunch of crinkly balls under there. We both giggled because crinkly balls. And that's why we're married. <sighs> Moving right along. We're going to Japan for our next one. I, they, they, Speaking of weird porn. <laughs> there are many things in life that, that are just unpleasant experiences. Dentist appointments. Um, mm. the Black first, Friday. Black Friday. Oh, God. And, of course, everyone's favorite, the job interview. Because yeah. we all have to do our best. We have to put on the best clothes we have. We have to go in there, lie our asses off. And, and answer hope. questions like, why do you want to work here? With an answer other than, because living costs money. Yeah, I'd like to not starve to death. That's why I, I would really like to want work. to work here. I just want to not die. Yeah. However, normally you have to go in and make a good impression. This is how you do the absolute opposite of that. Man admits stealing wallet from company president during job interview. Was the interview to be the 11th ocean? That's not the way to put that. That isn't, no. You got my point, though. A Yokohama man was arrested Monday after admitting he stole a company president's wallet during a job interview. I wanted to work for that company, but since I haven't got a job, I needed money, Shogo Takata, 24, said in owning up to the charges. Takata is suspected of stealing the wallet containing 50,000 yen, which is about $7,500. In cash? In cash. Who carries that on now? <laughs> Did you have a drug deal later that day? <laughs> Who the fuck carries $7,500 in cash to work? <laughs> Stole it from the president's bag during the interview at an elevator maintenance company in Say Award. Uh, police believe Takata took advantage of easy access to the bag when the president briefly left the room. After the interview, the president noticed that the wallet had disappeared. Uh, the chat is saying 50,000 yen is 500. 500. Okay. 
Well, I put that into Google. I put that into to Google and it said it was 7,500 US. Chat is adamant that it is 500. 500? Okay. Well, 500 makes a bit more sense then. It's a little less excessive. It's a little less excessive. But yeah, still. You're probably not getting that job. Uh, the president said he only only he and Takato in the office during the interview. So, you know, suspect list, very narrow. Very short. Takata had included his contact details, including his address and phone number when he submitted his resume. He did not contact the company to learn about the results of the interview. Any more words of Antoine Dodson? You are so dumb. You are really dumb. They gonna find you. They fought to... It's, uh, I just... I, not a, I, unless, the, uh, unless the job you're interviewing for is pickpocket. Right. Or up-close magician. Or something where that would be relevant. This is not a great idea. This is That's not, not a, a thing you should do. And you have, they, you gave them, you told them, here's where I'll be. Yeah, this is where you can find me. Apparently carrying cash is more the norm in Japan because they're not big into credit cards. More people operate in cash there. That's unusual. So say it the chat. I, they, they say a lot of things in my chat, though. I don't specifically trust but, them. Regardless, if he had $5 or $5 million, don't fucking pickpocket the guy you're hoping will give you a job. Unless the job is pickpocket. In which case, well, even in that case, I think they'd still be like, yeah, no, because that's mine. Well, yeah, but then you give it back in a snarky way. and Except they figured out try, immediately who it try was. Try to be Matt Damon if you can. Except they immediately figure out who it was. Yeah. So you can't really cover your tracks all that well. So you're not qualified for that job either. Yeah. Yeah, maybe don't leave out documents with your name and address when you steal from people either. Well, next up is... Florida. No, for fuck's sake. Florida. It wouldn't be a week without Florida. It would not be a week without Florida. We couldn't get through this bit without slowing and by Florida. You know, I understand. What are we going to do? Like, if we're still doing this in 50 years when, thanks to global warming, Florida's Florida underwater. Cease to exist, what the fuck are we going to do? Well, they're probably going to be very, very, very crazy, methed up mer people at that point. Like, we will just have a half hour bit of the cats because Florida will be gone. One of two things will happen. The idiots will move north or they'll drown. <laughs> right, but if all the idiots drown, we don't have They're going shot. to evolve gills. They're going to evolve gills. That's what's going to happen. Dude, if Floridians get to evolve before we do, fuck that. If Floridians get gills, I better be a fucking X-Man. So I... I think we, when you gotta go, you gotta go. We can all respect that. And <laughs> nothing on this show good starts that way. Nothing does. Nothing does. Um, sometimes you can't find a bathroom, so you gotta go outside. And if you take proper precautions to conceal yourself during this, okay. However,. That's probably, those are your two only options. Find a bathroom or find a bush. Not a cooler. Well, no, actually he did find a bush. Bush light. Cops, man, use 7-Eleven cooler as a bathroom. Oh. Unable to locate the restroom at a 7-Eleven, a Florida man opted instead to relieve himself at the store's walk-in cooler where a stack of bush beer was defiled by the tipsy suspect. At least he picked a beer whose taste would not be affected adversely. I, I just, I, I, I like do. No one will notice the difference. I do like the fact that he, had, if you have to pee on a bush, he peed on a bush, so. Yeah. 
True. Uh, oh, the, oh, what an unfortunate. Grady, could you stop for a second? Like, Grady, for just one second. Do you think second. you'd be the first person in history to pee behind that 7-Eleven? Because you wouldn't. You wouldn't even be the first person that day. Can you hear this? I hear scritch, 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 scritch. He is... What, what's he scritching? His, his poop. Well, you gotta bury the poop. Can you give it just... Can you hold it, buddy? Just for a minute. Anyway. You gotta bury the poop, otherwise predators will find you. Oh, this guy is... Oh, the, the unfortunate name on this gentleman. Daniel Colon! <laughs> 46. It's probably Cologne. Cologne? It's spelled C O L O N. That's a Hispanic surname, and I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Cologne. You know, every day in elementary school. I went to school with a kid whose last name was that, which is why I know that. He entered the Treasure Island convenience store around 7.30 p.m. Saturday looking for a bathroom. When that search failed, he opened a door marked employees only. He then entered what turned out to be the 7-Eleven's walk-in cooler. He began urinating on several cases of beer. A store employee had spotted him entering the cooler, confronted him, and told him to stop. He left the store and drove away. Subsequently, a vet arrested after his vehicle was pulled over by cops searching for the 7-Eleven suspect in addition to criminal mischief and burglary charges stemming from the co cooler urination. Cologne was also charged with drunk driving. Help me out here, fellas. If you're going to whip it out in a public place, for whatever reason, isn't it in your best interest not to choose the coldest part of that public place? Yeah. Like somebody walks in on you and you're too busy explaining yourself to pull up your pants and not get arrested. Like, shrinkage! Oh, no, no. It's, it's really, my shrinkage! It's really cold in here, man. Really For real. Cold. Like, don't pick the coldest place. After being read his rights, Galan reportedly told police he could not find the bathroom, so he entered the walk in cooler. Hi. Hi. Oh, God. No. No, put me down. I got, I got to go. Okay. <laughs> I. You could not find the bathroom, so he entered the walk-in cooler. I mean, you could ask an employee. I know! Why did- what the- It's like, hey man, where's the bathroom? Not, well, I can't find it. This'll have to do. My- my job doesn't have a customer bathroom, and I get yelled at for that all the time. Was like, this a decision you made? We don't have a- I tell them- the big department store right next door has one. It's really close. And then they yell at me because we don't have one. They're like, well, where do you go? We have an employee bathroom. It's not what? handicap certified or anything like that. Like, it's it's what? not. Why did it? Why is it suitable for customer use? But they get mad at us because. Was this a decision you yourself made? Obviously. I also get yelled at that shit's made in China and the prices are too high, which are also decisions I personally made. Uh, I just, it, it's just deciding, well, here's the best place to take a leak. Yeah. Do you do that at home? Do you be like, well, I can't find the bathroom just right Just pee this in place. your fridge? Just pee in the fridge. Sure, that's a good idea. This is a good plan. I'm used to this. It's, it, it makes... Although I feel like if you can't find the bathroom in your own home, maybe your bladder isn't the core problem. This is someone I would just not... I would not want to invite over. No. You know, especially if you have a big house, would not no. want to invite them over. Our next one, this one is amazing. I, I, this, it's a teen comedy movie. I swear to God. And the headline does not lie. The headline is absolutely correct. Talpo Teen organizes three dates and chaos ensues. This is from, uh, from New Zealand in Auckland. Four stolen cars, a police chase, four wrecked cars, and eight youths facing charges 
is the cost ticked up by three Auckland boys trying to meet up with a Taupo girl who'd arranged the date on social media. As if that wasn't enough, the girl tore off her electronic monitoring bracelet and used a stolen car to track them down when they didn't turn up. The saga came to light at 4 a.m. Uh, Saturday when police uh, pursuit of a Honda Accord stolen from Hamilton began near uh, Toko, uh, Tokoroa. Gotta say these right. The pursuit was abandoned by police due to the suspect's manner of driving as well as the risk to public safety. Stolen motor car was lo later located by police being driven uh, near the intersection of Uranway Oran Road. I, so, so many, so many vowels. <laughs> police decided the, the only way to stop the Honda was with road spikes. After hitting the road spikes, the car rolled and came to a stop on its roof at the intersection. They, inter they uh, arrested three juvenile juveniles without accident, without incident or injury. Um, the juveniles were aged 14, 15, and 12. Police found the three had stolen two other cars between Auckland and Hamilton as they were, quote, determined to drive to Taupo to meet a young Taupo girl. 16-year-old girl, meanwhile, got impatient when the boys failed to make the date, so she removed her electronic monitoring bracelet, sparking another police search, and was later arrested for by police for similar reasons as the first three. The 16-year-old girl was found by police staff with four other juvenile males in another stolen vehicle, very close to where the earlier stolen vehicle had crashed. This stolen motor vehicle containing these five ju juveniles had also crashed. So the motion capture for uh, GTA Auckland is going <laughs> pretty well. But wait, there's more. This is, while they waited for assistance to arrive, the 16-year-old girl made an escape attempt in the police car she was detained in. Why did this girl have a monitoring bracelet anyway? Like, how do you get a fucking ankle bracelet at 16? I think we're seeing why, Tara. And why did they have to steal three cars? Like, what happened to the first two cars? I don't know! <laughs> However, this is one of those nights you tell your grandchildren about. This is in every possible definition of the world. How did you meet grandma? <laughs> this is in every possible definition of the word, an amazing night. You know, they could have just done this instead of all of how I met your mother. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta say, this girl, she's pretty baller. She made a date with three guys that apparently all knew each other in the same night and was like, they ain't showing up. I'm do something about this. Cut off her monitoring bracelet and stole a fucking car while these dudes stole a car. Then they crashed and stole another fucking car. Everybody's stealing cars. And when they got arrested, she tried to steal the police car. It's like the Pixar version of Fast and Furious. <laughs> Oh, that's just or amazing. Like, or like the preteen Disney Channel version. That is just amazing. Coming up after Liv and Maddie. <laughs> What's the driving age in New Zealand? Oh, I, probably 16, I want to say. Like, I don't did know. any of these little motherfuckers have a license? The 12 year old I'm betting did not. <laughs> It's 15. pretty sure at 12, you don't get to drive anywhere, but uh, like on a farm because you drive a tractor or something like that's a thing. But in metropolitan areas, I don't think they let 12 year olds drive. Well, it's time for the last story. And like I said, gentlemen, and you know what? Even anyone, if you're a little bit squeamish, you might want to prepare yourselves because the picture on this one. Gird your loins. This is an, um, this Oh, 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 I'm looking at it and it hurts. Well, let just, yeah, it, 
So I'm gonna, you know, here's what we're gonna do for the class. I'm gonna show them just the picture. And we're gonna let them guess at the headline. Yep, we're gonna let okay, them see if they can to see the picture. We're gonna let them see if they can figure this one out here. You don't want to step into the shot? Hi. We're going to let them process that for a second. I'm on a delay, so I can't see it yet. On the screen. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a good headline. Ooh. Did everyone figure this one out yet? Ooh. Man wow. gets chopstick lodged in penis. The caption on that picture. A man stuck a metal chopstick up his penis after seeing blood in his urine. You'd think that would be the other way around. <laughs> you'd think the... Holy think, God. That sounds backwards, doesn't it? A man who was too shy to approach a doctor about blood in his urine attempted to identify the cause of his illness at home by inserting a stainless steel chopstick into his penis. How would that determine the cause? He was then forced to undergo surgery to remove the seven inch long object after he rammed it so far into his genitals that he could not remove it. Chen told doctors he thought his urethra was broken, so he inserted a chopstick to investigate. How would that tell you? I don't know. What kind of fucking diagnostic method is that? <laughs> Scans at the hospital showed the chopstick had reached the man's rectal wall. If he pushed any further upward, it could have proved fatal. They successfully removed the, the chopstick from his penis. He's recovering in the hospital. I really, really wonder what diagnostic purpose this was going to serve. I don't know. Like, I've, I've seen firsthand that there is a medical use for this phrase, poke it with a stick. <laughs> because that's how they measure the depth of a wound. They poke it with a fucking stick and yeah. they measure the blood on the stick. This is not... Mm -mm. You can't dipstick your dipstick. <laughs> like, it's not like you're going to find the precise spot that's bleeding because that shit's going to smear when it comes out and you're going to cause more bleeding. I just, it, I, I, oh my God. Oh, also, if you eat food with that, don't shove it up your dick. Well, yeah. Hopefully not anymore. I just, exactly right. If I have, you know what, if I'm having a problem with my flesh, my solution is not going to be, I'm going to poke something in there and hope it fixes it. It's like with, have you ever noticed when your car is making a weird noise? Yeah. I have known people who will just smack their car until it stops making the noise. And act like, okay, and there you go. And act like this is okay. Yeah. If it that's or I just turn up the radio loud enough that I can't hear the noise anymore. That's a bit so like car stops working. You can't just be like, you know, I'm just gonna mess around with it and it'll be fixed. Yeah. You can't, this isn't like a salad. You can't just jumble shit together and everything's fine when again. When I had that leg problem though, my brother-in-law did want to do at-home surgery. He said to my nephew, Pat, go get me some alcohol and a steak knife. We'll take care of this. I was like, no, I'll, I'll go to the ER where they have painkillers. And he is a medical professional. He was too shy to approach the doctor. Well, we cured that, didn't we? Yeah, you're like, I have never been, you know what, if I'm pissing blood, my shyness pretty much drops at that point. I'm like, you know what? I don't want my dick to fall off. 
hey, dude, I would go, I would go to the hospital without pants. I'd be like, fucking fix this. You just spray down the place with your bloody urine. God, yeah, I would be like, you fix this somebody. shit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fix this. Oh, Bellagio. I would uh, my 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 reluctance to my my threshold for being publicly embarrassed that drops of the idea your genitals might fall the fuck off. I'm really stuck on how this was a sound diagnostic method. Like, what was this going to tell you? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Now that hurts. So the problem is obviously over here. Also, there's a lot more blood now. Just it. I mean, I just feel like maybe this was an excuse. <laughs> he was just trying to psych himself. Like, all right, look, if I got a chopstick in there, I'm not gonna have to worry about my dick because, well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about maybe. Maybe he put it up there for a completely recreational reason. Oh, like yeah. He needed to tell the doctor something. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you're thinking he was he was having a little bit of enjoyment time. He's like, oh, I was just trying to find out what happened, what went wrong. And here's the thing. They do make things specifically for that purpose that you also don't have to use to eat ramen. <laughs> Now you, no one wants to go over to this guy's house for dinner now because they're never going to be sure. Is that the one? Is that the dick stick? Right. Or is that the dick stick? I, I'm, you know what? I think, I think we're just going out tonight. Let's go out to eat tonight. So I guess, yeah, the, the first thing we've learned tonight is self-diagnostic. Some things it'll work for. There is no K on the end of self-diagnostic. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a diagnostic. No. We've learned that if your date turns into a Blues Brothers reenactment, maybe you might want to rethink your Saturday nights. Oh, please, if you'd had that Saturday night at 15, you'd be telling that story every week on this show. Yeah, I'd be proud of that shit. What am I saying? <laughs> you couldn't stop me from telling that fucking no. story. I would know. That would be the first you. I would go up to stranger and be like, guess what I did when, yes, I, was I, did when I was 15. The first thing out of my fucking mouth. We've learned if you can't find the bathroom, that doesn't mean anywhere is fair game. Back of the building. Back, just go to the back of the building. It's a 7-Eleven. You will not even be the first person to pee on the back of the building that day. <laughs> that year. I mean, you, you just, that's, you, as far as the cops are concerned, driving, you're part of the scenery at that point. Yeah. We have learned that if you're going for a job interview, it's probably a really good idea not to steal money from the guy you want yeah. to get a job from so you can have money. Probably. <clears throat> There's like, you know, if you teach a man to fish, uh, fish for a life for a lifetime. It's this is like if you steal a man's fish, he's not going to teach you how to fish. I'm not sure that translated as directly as you know. We've learned that if you are annoying enough, you can unite whole neighborhoods against you. Well, I think we're looking at that with our 2B president. Yeah, and, and finally... Like, he's uniting the whole country against him. Finally, um, when you're attempting to vent your rage, righteous or otherwise... It usually helps if you vent it at the person you're actually trying to vent it at. Yes. You should find you you should direct it correctly and not at unsuspecting Canadians. Yeah. Like leave Canada out of it. They feel bad enough about Bieber. <laughs> 